<laughs> Brazil has the best odds to win, then Argentina, then France, Spain, England, yeah. just kind of going down the list here. Um, of those top three, I mean, England's, it just seems like the betting markets are going that way because that's uh, that's the pick that people who bet in the United States are probably going to bet on. But um, the, those those top five there, I mean, what are what are your thoughts on who has the best chance? For me, France, just based on what I've read, it seems like a really good bet, but I'm not sure. I mean, the, the only problem with France is that they won the last one, you know, mm. and pe- teams rarely repeat. It just almost never happens. I mean, I think the last team to repeat was Brazil, like in the 50s. Um, it just never happens. So purely on that, I mean, Brand- the France squad is absolutely stacked. Like just top to bottom at every position has elite players. Um, but, and then just tons of firepower. I mean, just Benzema and Mbappe alone, but you, they have like guys like Dembele coming off the bench and it's just crazy. Um, but and they, they, they have a favorable... They have a good draw too, right? In their group, that's also yeah. gonna help them out. But keep going, sorry. But that that would be my only thing is just you know, are you gonna bet against the the, the guys who just won the previous one? And they almost it never happens. It never. It just almost like they even most teams that win the next the next time around they usually like fall on their face. Um, but um, so so that would be my only caveat for France. Brazil um, has also like a very strong stacked squad. I think I'm not surprised that the betting markets have them number one. And because they also in qualifying, like just absolutely walked through South American qualifying. I mean, in South American qualifying is very, very difficult. Um, It's very like everyone plays everyone. It's not like in Europe where you get assigned a group um, and you only play the people in your group. And it's not it's not that difficult um, to get through European qualifying. South American qualifying is brutal. Everyone plays everyone and you have to go play in Bolivia, you know, in like a 3000, uh, you know, like 3000 meter high stadium somewhere in the mountains of La Paz. Um, or it's just like really tough or Chile where it's like always really tough to play. And, and Brazil just absolutely dominated in a way like a team in South America hasn't dominated in, in, in a long time. Um, so Brazil, you know, definitely would be one of my heavy favorites. Argentina is interesting because even though they don't have as much talent as France or Brazil, like nowhere near as much talent, they do have Messi kind of sneakily putting together one of his better seasons in years. Um, That's amazing. It seems very clear that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he really struggled last year at PSG, um, like very, very below his, his usual level. He's recovered pretty like amazingly well this season. And it's pretty obvious to me that Messi sees this as his last chance and is just turning it on. Um, and and he could, like, and no one's, like, kind of, he, because he went to PSG and no one watches the French League and no one gives a shit, like, <laughs> no one's watching him. And, like, he's, like, out of the consciousness in a way. People, like, forgot just how great he, he can be when he really wants to. Um, and he's, like, quietly putting together that kind of season at PH, PSG. So you can see him walking into the tournament and being, like, the player of the tournament and totally surprising people, which is strange to say. Uh, about Messi, um, and and you know the, the, I don't know if you saw like EA Sports, so the FIFA thing. They they do a they run a simulation and um, before like the last four or five World Cups, and they've predicted the winner every single time. Um, oh wow! <laughs> and and they predicted Argentina to win. So take you know take of that what you will. I mean that that would be an incredible story, right? And just in terms of uh, writing some of the storylines coming out of the the World Cup, like having Messi maybe in the twilight yeah. of his career take it home. Uh, it, it just what Argentina hasn't won since the eighties, right? Since nineteen eighty six, when when Diego Armando Maradona won a World Cup basically by himself. Um, yeah, they made the final in ninety, and they made the final in twenty fourteen. Um, but they lost, they lost both of them pretty narrowly to Germany, actually both times. Um, but, uh, um, I think if, if, if Argentina wins, you know, Messi probably solidifies his legacy as, as the greatest of all time. I mean, it's like the one big kind of asterisk on his record is that he didn't win a world cup and it's always kind of unfair, you know, winning the world cup required a lot of timing and luck and, um, you know, having a good team at the right moment and all that good stuff. But he did play in a final, they lost, um, and, uh, you know, if he does manage to win it this time, I think it's it would be very, very difficult for someone to make the argument that he's not uh, that he's not the greatest to ever play 
Um, right now, it's it's always like the trump card. It's like you know the Stugatz argument. You know how many rings? How many rings? I, I hate that. Uh, I hate that shit though. Nando. Yeah. Like well, it, you, to, know. you know, it's this is yeah, like because everything. You're, because you're a smart sports commentator. You know. Thank you. <laughs> well, th that's literally you've crystallized everything that I hate about sports media uh, in that one just like statement there, and that that's yeah. it's just set, it puts the you know hairs on the back of my neck up, standing up, just thinking about that. <laughs> but. Um, like you mentioned Germany there, they have the six best best odds uh, by a lot of books. What what's your what's your your take on their chances? Here's a rule of thumb: never bet against Brazil or Germany in a World Cup. If you look at the last seventy years of soccer since the 1950s, um, the amount of times there has played there has been a World Cup final without either Brazil or Germany, I think it's like three or four tops wow you know brazil and germany are always in the mix always in the you know in the mix for a semi-final easily if not to play in the final the germans they never they always sneak up on people because they never are built around uh superstars like they have no mega stars they don't have anyone at the at the caliber of messi or 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 neymar or benzema or you know they don't have a they don't have anyone like that and they never they almost never do um but you know they 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 won it in 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 2014 um they played in the final uh, semi-final in 2010 uh they played in the semi-final in 20, 2006 they played in the final in 2002 they're just always in the mix <laughs> you can never really uh you can never really bet against them so the germans you can just like any analysis um i mean there's that famous like gary lineker line you know soccer is a very simple sport uh, Gary Lineker is the England legend and who's now a commentator on BBC. So soccer is a very simple sport or football is a very simple sport. 22 guys like chase a soccer ball and then uh, Germany wins, you know, <laughs> um, they're just, they're just historically such a powerhouse. Um, England, on the other hand, who, who are stacked with talent, just have, are having a ton of problems right now. Um, <laughs> they lost at home to Hungary, five nil to Hungary at home, five mm. nil um just really really embarrassed like the kind of loss that that is hard to to get to get over and it seems like you know they overperformed uh expectations at the euro cup and and but it seems like their their coach gareth southgate is is really struggling to get anything out of the, out of his players i mean it's the kind of thing in the world cup you you see this often where a team will struggle and they look like they're walking into the to the tournament looking like shit and then you just kind of get a couple lucky bounces and you get some momentum. And, and I know that that makes me sound a little bit like Stu Gatz, but it is true. It's such a short tournament um, that and, and in soccer, like one goal changes everything, you know, so it's 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 so much on the margins that one yes. one stupid thing or one action can just completely transform a game. Um, and really, it's like hockey in that like, instance. You... I mean, I sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. But like I follow hockey no, no, no. Uh, much closer than I, I, I follow soccer. And like, you know, when you describe England for anybody who's watching who also follows hockey, they remind me of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like England cares mm. so much about ho about uh, soccer. They get riled up about it every single year. They invented Toronto it. Right. Toronto. Same with hockey. And yet they choke every damn time and that's what it seems like and yeah. so that's why like those fifth best odds it's just you see something you know if you're a degenerate like i am you see like okay that is just somebody who's like that's wish fulfillment being reflected in the betting markets right yeah i mean and you you know the uk is a huge betting you know the, they love betting yeah. in the uk uh oh yes maybe loving their sports <laughs> betting yeah